All right, it's time to paint this plane. We're using Plane Maker to create this plane. We are going to need an external graphics program. I've been using Photoshop in this tutorial before, but I want to switch over to GIMP now because GIMP is an open source free software program and I'm sure it'll make a lot of people happy to know that you don't have to pay lots of money for a graphics program that'll be able to paint this plane. So first thing I do is I go to Output Texture Map Starting Points. And basically what this does is a plane maker will take the 3D shape that is your plane and wrap a texture around it and export that texture with starting points that will help us orient ourselves across this body. So if you want to see what that texture looks like, you can go to the special menu and go reload textures. Or you can just hit the T keyboard shortcut. So here we have the textures as they appear on the plane. And they get created in the same directory as your airplane, uh, your ACF file. And here you can see how a flat image is mapped to wrap itself around that 3D object. So let's go ahead and open up this file in GIMP. And let's explore a little bit how this file works. So we have a paintbrush tool enabled here. And it's, I think it's black paint that we've got here. So let's just paint something on here and save it. And switch back to Plane Maker and hit the T button for refresh. And we've got that scribbly line appearing on the side of the fuselage now. Good. Now we know that painting stuff in, in GIMP will actually translate over to the 3D object we've got in Plane Maker. So let's go back here, undo that, and I suggest we take the images that we took in order to make the plane and create a library using roughly these parts. Let's go ahead and open it in GIMP. Let's select this part that we want to copy into our paint scheme template. So let's hit copy. And then here we should create a new layer before we paste it in. Here we have the new layer. Let's go ahead and paste this uh, segment of the fuselage in. So I'll save this again. This time I get a warning. Why do I get a warning? Because there are several layers at work here, and PNG files only have one layer when they're exported. So it's going to take all these layers, merge them together, and then encode it as a PNG file, which can then be mapped across your plane. Whoa, look at that distortion. I just hit spacebar to see the wireframe of the plane. And then we can see through to the background to sort of help us line up the texture. Okay, so let's go back to GIMP. We need to stretch the body vertically and shrink it horizontally. So let's go ahead and activate this tool that will allow us to do that. And shrink it horizontally. And stretch it vertically. Maybe around like this. And then we can still move it around by positioning the mouse right in that bullseye. Now we go here and say scale. We go save again and export. And then hit T to refresh. Ooh, that's so pretty high. Go here again. Shrink it down this way. Shrink it down this way. Bring it down a little bit. And move it forward perhaps a tiny bit. And then hit scale. Save it. Export it refresh it. So you get the idea of this process. Now I see also that this here will require some distortion because right now it's not really looking too lined up properly and we've got that big black line that we need to get rid of. So now that we've got this positioned properly uh, all that stuff can be deleted later on and we can color the body around uh, this basic structure that we have here. But right now what I'm interested in doing is just getting this thing over to the other side. So I copied that, I'm pasting it, and dragging it up to exactly the same location we have it here at the bottom. Hit save again, export. Now let's see what we got on the other side. Oh, we got a paint scheme, but look at the text. The text is actually reversed. So this tells me that probably everything that goes along the right side of the plane will have to be reversed graphically in order to make it look right. So we need to actually zoom in here, select this text, and flip it horizontally with the Shift F key function. And now let's save it, export it, go back to Plane Maker and hit Refresh. It flipped right back around to where it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's keep texturing this.
So once I have it this far, I want to change tracks a little bit because I want to show you how you can actually make multiple paint schemes for the same plane. And in order to do that, I need to split off all the parts that are common to every plane, no matter what its paint scheme is, from the parts that are unique to each different paint scheme. So let's go to GIMP. And I've got a nice little tool here called the Color Select Tool. And I go in and I can select the gray color here. And notice it selects all the gray parts for me. So I can hit the plus key and select this. And anything else I'd like to select, for example, that darker gray, say I want to keep that as well. So I select until I have everything that I want. And then I go to the Select dialog and I hit Invert. Now when I hit Delete, guess what happens? Everything except what was selected gets erased. Now let's select None. And we've got the makings of a templated background for the planes. This is actually originally an artificial paint scheme. And what I want to do is eventually grab something from a more realistic resource, such as an image like this one here, like a real photograph where you actually see the gloss and the stuff reflecting off the windows. You have some windows shut, some windows open. That's the sort of realism we want to shoot for. But for now, let me just try to explain to you how to do this so that you can have one layer that has all the common features to every plane, no matter what its paint scheme is, and then you can concentrate the other layers on adding color and detail that are specific to the different carriers. Okay, so I'm going to go here and touch up these parts here that require some more bending around, as I noticed last time. So if I have the paintbrush tool selected, I can hit the control key and load myself the color and then I'll draw this cockpit just the way I think that it might look good, given the way it wraps itself around the plane. Okay, so I have that outline there. I'm going to fill in the inside with uh, that kind of gray. And once I got that, I can copy that over to the other side. Go like that. And then I can hit the anchor button to apply that or commit that. Now I know I still have some stuff to clean up here, but let me mute this layer for now and show you something that I could do to the background layer here. Let me um, set the threshold to about 50, and then I'm going to take a completely white color and paint this a couple of times. And that gets rid of those lines for me. So when I zoom back out again, we have a nice clean white fuselage to work on. The thing is, I don't want it to be completely white. I want to emulate some shading. So I'm going to select this tool here, the Contiguous Region tool, based on color. And I'm going to then switch over to the Gradient tool. I have a white going to sort of a gray. Now, if I drag it from up here to down here, what I'll get is a gradient that makes it sort of look rounded. That's what I'm looking for. So let me do the other side. And now we have the fuselage looking a lot more rounded. If we enable this clip now, it's starting to look more realistic plain now. I'm going to go ahead and just delete these lines up here, just so that you get the idea of it. And now I have a layer that allows me to work on the continuing details of the entire plane without worrying about the actual textures of the libraries. If we create a new layer, tuck this layer underneath this one, and now we could take different coloring schemes. For example, if I want to create a stripe here, green, Let's say we want to have a green paint scheme here, then we can take, for example, the gradient tool, and it goes from green to gray. Maybe that'll look decent. Go like that. And maybe we'll have to move it up a, little, up a little bit. You can move the background colored parts of this plane around without affecting the layer that contains the essential parts that all the planes would have. Okay, so say I have that. Let me copy this. Now we can anchor this. And this can become one of our libraries. Let's see what it looks like when we save it. The T button to refresh. Oh, suddenly we have a plane that has... I still need to do some corrections on that cockpit location. It doesn't look perfect yet because it uh, just seems kind of dented in there. I have to stop here and go on to the next tutorial to show you how to actually create the folders and structure that you need in order to be able to switch libraries very easily and quickly. You can populate this whole thing with a whole bunch of different libraries that all you do is you click another radio button and your plane can load up with a different paint scheme.
So that's kind of what I want to show you in my next tutorial.